Let's bring in Brian Belsky, Chief Investment Strategist over at BMO Capital Markets. Also, Barry James, President and Portfolio Manager at James Investment Research. We're going to take a bit of a top-down approach here. Start with you, Brian. Dom. <laughs> Does this market and the economy support the bull market? Yes. Here's why. Uh, what happened yesterday and what really started last week was what we like to call textbook, right? Small caps, which had been leading, started to roll over. The big stocks that had been leading performance started to see performance dispersion. Yesterday was very important. That's why I'm glad Bob said watch the last hour of the day. Because up until the last hour of the day, you had a bunch of quote-unquote stocks that have been junky that have really underperformed for GMGE. Positive all day long until the last hour of the day. And then you saw traditional defensive areas like Staples Utilities outperform. Now they're paying the piper again today. Those stocks, especially Staples, are in structural secular uh, decline still from a fundamental basis. So did we get an opportunity to buy stocks? I hate saying buy the dip. But from a fundamental perspective, we've been in a bit of a news vacuum, ladies and gentlemen. And I think that earnings can, will, and should save the day. And I think people are too bearish on a short-term basis with respect to earnings for the third quarter. Barry, did yesterday present an opportunity for people to buy the dip? Brian won't say it, but <laughs> would you have bought the dip or did you buy the dip? Um, did not. Did not. Um, what we see is a long, long bull market and actually two bull markets, one the Fed created, and the other was with, on the backs of the tax cuts. And we've had this mania in the, the tech sector, specifically the fangs, and we're likely seeing what will be a, a transition, a rotation out of that particular area. If we look at that, the, the, in, the internet type stock did 28% in the first nine months, the value stock did 4%. So there's this whole world that's just been left behind. And this is part and parcel, I think, of that come up in, uh, in the tech hacker area into uh, perhaps a transition into these uh, cheaper stocks. Brian, you say in your notes that bear markets do not happen when everyone's looking out for one, and that's sort of what's happening. Yeah. I would make the counter argument to that, that nobody was looking for what's happening now. We were in the cusp of Dow 27,000. Everything seemed great until rates popped. Now we've gotten oh, between the move in rates and then these profit warnings from the PPGs and other earnings that have already come down from big, dirty industrial companies that are selling into all sorts of different industries. It's been a, a surprising wake up call. Perhaps. May, may I retort? Please. Everyone? No. Uh, when you're looking you at know, pull up, you, you I know, know what I meant. Consensus okay. view was right. there was there, I would say. No one was looking for a bear market. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, if, you, uh, if you read the majority of the pundit stuff, the majority of my competitors have doubted this bull market since March of 2009. This year, okay, if you, if you scroll the news headlines, 9 out of 10, negative on the market. We've had so many prognostications of an earnings peak in the first quarter, pro, uh, stock market peak in the first quarter. Most of the strategists that have been on this show and this network have been talking about bear markets coming, bear That's markets not coming. That's true. The, the price targets have been across the street up to like 3,000, It actually, Scott, we actually, last time when I was on with you in February, if you remember February 09 on Squawk Box, we were having the same very discussion on a day that was like this. Yeah, you remember it. Oh, I remember. Because guess what? We were negative on the network was negative that day. The show was negative, And I came out and said, this is not the end of the bull market. Calmer heads will prevail. Earnings and fundamentals in our country remain positive. Let's not be a bullet point type of an analyst or investor. Things still look very good. All the things, though, that you cited were happening long before the past week or two weeks. I mean, small caps, we lost small caps back in August, correct? We lost FANG stocks back in June. It's, it felt like the sell-off was longer in coming. Just people weren't paying attention. We didn't lose FANG of... stocks back in June. Google well, might... Last time Google... We had a 52-week high in these FANG stocks. It was at least four weeks. Google, Apple... At least four weeks from 52 weeks. Net, Netflix, all have been outperforming up until the last two or three weeks, right? F Facebook was the biggest issue. We know that. From a balance sheet and earnings perspective, so these are still some of the strongest companies in the world. Yesterday, by the way, Netflix was the poster child for the big pullback in tech, but AMD was one of the worst performing stocks. And oh, by the way, Tiffany was the worst performing if stock could, in the S&P If I could just interject yeah. here briefly, um, some of the other side of the, the story is the fact that insiders have been selling. That's a big difference than, uh, say, earlier this year. They've been big selling. We have a hiatus right now in buybacks uh, because of the earnings season. So that has been a trillion dollars worth of supply being removed. And the Fed is actually tightening. They're actually buying back uh, or not you know, reissuing the bonds. And over 90% of the run-up we had from 09 on is correlated to the Fed quantitative easing. We now have quantitative tightening. It is a hurdle. It doesn't mean that the world's coming to an end because the economy's strong and we still have upward momentum in the market. But 
that we're seeing this type of volatility, I think, is a normal thing. All right, so we got the very bullish and the very bearish takes all in a half hour. I hope you, Tyler, I hope you remember this. I, years from now, I hope you remember this. I will, Scott. You, you know, know that I will. <laughs> you know, this all right three of you have known me for a long time. You know I will yeah, I remember. That's <laughs> kind of obvious. <laughs> Our thanks to Brian Belsky and Barry James. Very robust discussion, guys. Thank you so much.